great vision begins with a heavy burden in the heart of a visionary. Any vision that never begins with a burden is a mere fantasy and will not carry any fire that's capable of driving a change agent or the revivalist. A fire that burns inside a hero's heart that goes out of his way to fight for a sane community by changing lives one at a time. Uh, my name is Akenet Owili. I'm the co-founder and currently the program manager for Mauna Africa Center for Transformation. Yeah, this organization was started way back in 1999. It started as an, an informal organization, uh, a cultural group that was focused on uh, engaging young people uh, through their talents, their skills and their abilities. And the aim was actually to create uh, an alternative form of employment to young people. So over, the, over time, the organization has actually grown. Way back in 2000, 2020, in December, we decided to register it to be a non-governmental organization from uh, an informal to a, a formal organization. Currently, we are mandated to work in five counties within uh, the country, the Republic of Kenya, but our implementation area is actually here in Dandora as our starting point. So we are legally uh, registered by the NGO Coordination Board uh, as a non-governmental organization. Yeah, my desire to found uh, as a co-founder of this organization was actually to, I grew up uh, in Dandora, I've seen the challenges that young people uh, were going through, which relate to almost the same kind of challenges that I was going through. And uh, as a means of just trying to create a solution from the problem that has been persisting in Dandora is like what best can we do so I was sitting down with a friend of mine who is called MC Ka. he was one of the one of the musicians for Kalamashaka so he told me Ken why don't we come and sit down and recreate uh, Maono uh, Africa Center for Transformation as a as an organization that is going to deal with young people so I came on board uh, after the call from my friend and uh, I, I told him I'm going to cre recreate it to be an organization that is going to, fo to focus so much on the talents, on the abilities and the, and the skills of young people in Dandora. The motivation was actually to form uh, a way of employment uh, within Dandora, a way of income for young people in Dandora because we came to realize that uh, there was a lot of idleness in Dandora Young people are actually engaging in a lot of social destructive activities, uh, engaging in, uh, in crime, engaging in drug and substance abuse, engaging in, uh, in girls engaging in, in early marriages, in, in, in early, uh, early, early pregnancies. So we said, no, this, this cannot be right. And it's like when we were looking at, at it, it's like what is, what is causing all these things? It was all because they were not able to get a form of employment. and even. The ones that were even had even been educated, or even the ones that even had even gone through the formal schooling, could not at the end of the day still secure a meaningful uh, engagement or a, or a formal employment. So he said, "Okay, fine. Dandora is a place that is well known for talents and skills. Then why don't we create something that these young people will be able to earn something from what they are passionate about?" And that is how Maono Africa came came about. Maoni is actually a Swahili word for them, uh, a, a Swahili word. In English, it translates to, to vision. We seek to know how our hero got into this Maono project and why it matters so much to him. Yeah, Dandora is, uh, it has the two sides of it. Uh, the ugly side and, and the good side. Yeah. Having been born and raised in, in this place is like a, it's an experience that maybe I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't wish any other person or a young person to go through. At the same time, I would also wish somebody to go through because it brings the element of the good and bad. The bad is that uh, you can easily get into crime, you can easily get into these uh, social destructive activities. The uh, cases of school dropout is very high. Cases of idleness within the community is very high cases of crime is very high. So that is actually the downside of, of, of Dandora, of growing up in Dandora. They, we don't have role models, we don't have mentors, we don't have people we can look up to in terms of progressions in life. 
Now the other side, uh, the other good side of Dandora is that it's a place, it's a home of talent. Yeah, so many young people, so many big names in, in, in the entertainment industry have actually come out from Dandora in terms of the football, in terms of music, in terms of dance, in terms of modeling, any, any, any forms of creatives. Good names, uh, big stars have actually come from Dandora. So that is the, the other side, the other good side of Dandora. It's also molds you to become that kind of a hard kind of a person. Eh? Uh, the, the, wrong side, <laughs> the wrong language to use but it, it builds you uh, yeah if you look at it from the positive side it builds you but uh, the question is how many young people are able to go through that process and come out to be better better persons so if you look in terms of statistics it's like very few can actually go through and uh, why is that the question is some of these young people are not able to be given uh, the life skills that they're able now to be able to understand that uh, this is my challenge or my problems is just a process of life so that which molds me or prepares me for something great to come. Yeah, Dandora is known for not for the very good reason because if you if you look if you google out to find out what Dandora is what comes to your mind is the dam site. It's an area that hosts the, one of the biggest dam sites maybe probably within the east or central Africa or the biggest in Nairobi, so to speak. So, uh, and the, the, the dam site has, uh, has actually come with all the bad, all the bad things. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of fights, a lot of, uh, of attempts to, to take the dam site from Dandora. So, people who know Dandora, they do not know Dandora for the very good reasons. Yeah, many people fear coming to Dandora because they know Dandora for the, for the crimes. They know Dandora to be a place whereby a lot of lawless, uh, lawlessness is like uh, is it like a jungle, where it's a place where there's actually no order. But uh, what we are trying to do as an organization is actually to bring the media, to bring the the positive aspect of Dandora, because in every place that there's uh, something bad, there's definitely something good that can come out of it. So we are focusing so much on the gold aspect of it trying to find out what gold do we have in Dandora and that is what we are trying to bring out to the media so that the world may know that apart from the, all the wrong or the bad reasons or all the knowledge about Dandora there is actually something good that can come out of this place. Among Africa we are a creative space. Uh, our focus or our strategy is sports and art uh, which we are using as a, as a, as a strategy or as a means or as a tool to bring about social change and social development. So we are reinventing the roles of sports and art in addressing some of the challenges that young people are going through uh, within Dandora. So we, Dandora is just the, the, the starting point. Uh, yeah, we are, we, we are reinventing the use of, of sports and, and art in addressing uh, the issues that are affecting young people uh, within Dandora. And uh, we actually focus that Dandora is just the starting point. We are planning to, to roll out this program within the five uh, areas that we are mandated to work with uh, in as, uh, as mandated by the NGO Coordination Board. So sport is just one of the key activities that we are using. Uh, the, some of the other activities that we are having is like education. We are focusing so much on uh, issues of uh, ret uh, retention, progression, transitions of young people through the education ladder to the vocational uh, uh, skilling. We also have the health program where we focus on the four uh, key areas within the health. We have programs on HIV and AIDS prevention. We have programs on mental wellness where we are using dance as a strategy in addressing challenges that comes with mental wellness. We have programs on, on gender-based violence and sexual reproductive health and rights within young people in Dandora. The other program that we, are, we have on board is the livelihood programs, whereby we are focusing so much on how do we bring the social enterprise out of it. Some of the dance that uh, young people are doing, how are they able to get a living out of it. So we are trying to professionalize uh, the sports and art that we are having within our center. So the, other one, the last activity we are having, currently we are partnered with Freedom Fund. We are doing an activity on child domestic worker. Uh, exploitation and abuse. 
which is actually quite rampant here in Nairobi, Dandora being a, a hotspot area. So we have been doing a lot of awareness creation, uh, just in uh, sensitizing the community and, and people around on uh, on the challenges that uh, comes around with the issues of child domestic work, exploitation and abuse. So the other key element is we have uh, we are, we we, are, we have mainstreamed all our activities to include uh, persons with disability. Most of the activities that we are having, be it sport, be it dance, be it modeling, we are having young people who are actually able differently and they're able to participate in our programs. So it's one of our core values, the element of social inclusivity. Maono, a center for transformation, uses art as one of its main tools to change the lives of young people in Dandora slum. My name is Brian Washira Papi, and I'm a member of Maono Africa Center of Transformation as a dancer, and Maono Africa Center of Organization, like this, covers a lot of aspects according to arts and craft. We have acrobats, we have the dance, we have the models. So like this space, like we use, it's space used to nature talent, the kids out here, like having like the, there is this notion, like when you, somebody gets to say like you come from Dandora, there's always like people thinking about crime and most things, most negative things. So like here, like we try to at least capture like one or two or three like with our motto saying like each uh, each one teach one so like when you get to at least be in this space you get to at least go and teach somebody else what you learn so apart from the dance and other activities like we cover other aspects like mental health we cover gender-based violence where we come and get to there is people who there are people who came who come here and advocate I didn't do some advocacy on it. Uh, I knew I knew about Maono back in 2019. They were doing mobilization, wanting people to come to this space, getting to know what are the core values and things they their mission, which is to empower the society. So like when I got to know about Maono, I was not really kind of interested because like there are, there are many organizations are based to be for girls and not covering boys in in the society. So like when I came and di discovered that this center, it's more center for to transform to transform me. I was at least indulged to be working with them. My name is Daisy Omboy. I'm the current Miss Maona. Uh, I'm 17 of age. Yeah. Uh, the first time I met Maona was last year. I didn't know how to model, I didn't know about anything. I was just in drugs. So in the I was just passing through and then I saw some dancers. So and Ken invited me in to see what they are doing. So the session that I found. <laughs> so when I went well come on I mean change your two life sana Julie so change sana. my name is Ruth Umazi, but my stage name I'm known as Rutra or Tiwa. I'm 19 years old and I'm a dancer in Maono. Yeah. Uh Nilkwa Kruingine because uh, Maono is located in Phase 3, in Dandora, Dandora Phase 3. So that crew is in Dandora Phase 5, so we didn't have a uh, space to train. So due to that, uh, I was introduced to Maono by one of my friends. So I joined it, yeah. Supported my education, uh, Nilimaliza Shule 2021. So I made support. Na fees pia, pia easy unapewa information about GBV, unapewa tu yu education about girls, kuna organization zinakuja, zinapatina na maono. So we as dancers, we get more information about what's happening outside here and we appreciate it. Yeah, there are actually quite many. Uh, uh, I don't know to name names. <laughs> Yeah, I think you have just talked to this, this lady called Daisy, you have talked to her. Uh, she's actually one of our models, now currently actually participating in the Miss Nairobi uh, the, through the Delight fashion at, in town. 
Uh, she's a lady who was referred to us like uh, a year old, a year or a year and a half ago. And uh, I remember the first time that I happened to have met her. Uh, she was this kind of a lady who like uh, lives in her own world, eh? uh, having uh, uh, having pierced almost her body throughout. Uh, she had dropped out of school and is like uh, she was coming from this kind of. Uh, uh, I would say like a, a dysfunctional kind of a, a, a background or family setup. So through our intervention, we were able to bring her in within our facility or our center. We have been able to talk to her many times. We have been able to take her through many trainings, like uh, they usually have the girl power talks uh, every each, each and every month. Uh, we have been able to connect her or to refer her to other trainings, the life skills training. And uh, I can say that uh, today, as I talk to Daisy, she's definitely a different person from the person that I actually met some times back. Uh, somebody who now has some value, somebody who now cherishes life, somebody who, who looks at life from a different lens, from a different angle. Her desire, her passion to, to make, to, to succeed in life has actually grown all, uh, from, the, from the, actually from the moment that we met her. And uh, to me, that is what the Maono Africa Center for Transformation is all about. We are actually here to transform life. Uh, we are not working so much in numbers, but we are working with a, a human being at a time. What that one person transformed is already an achievement for us. Yeah, the dance, actually dance comes like uh, our, our, our main groups were the dance and the football team. We started with the football team, but now the dance came in. And when, when the dance came in, it's like there is a whole vibe. Nowadays, young people want to identify with dance and music. So it captures the, the, the majority of the young people that we are having within our facility. Uh, majority being uh, young girls and young mothers. Even nowadays, people who have, uh, uh, I mean, be, beyond our target age group, actually want to participate in the dance. So any program that you want to implement or you want to uh, to roll within, dance has been like the, the catch, the, the carrot, the bait uh, of it. So once they have been able to come within our facility, maybe through dance, then we are able to start implementing the other programs within. So they can come maybe for a dance, which are them, okay, fine, it's not just about dance. Can we still have this kind of a talk? before you engage in dance. Then after the dance, we can also have a sitting with them and also have this kind of a, of a talk with them. And through that, I've, been, I've, been, I've seen a whole transformation out of it because we have even been giving them even, the, giving them even teachings even about dance. So elements of discipline has actually come uh, to play in their lives. Yeah, elements of character development has actually come to play in their in their lives. Element of them being able to express, being, being able to talk, uh, as actually is becoming part and parcel of, of their lives. So dance has been key. Uh, we are looking forward into seeing how best we can professionalize it. We can make it grow. We are creating an, a, a dance academy out of it, also as a means of sustainability and. Uh, income uh, as a source of income to the organization so so far we've done so good with us the journey has not been a smooth ride for Ken, but does that deter him from his passionate vision yeah some of the challenges that we are going through uh, one major key challenge is actually funding because for us to run a successful uh, program we need funds yeah, for us to be able to reintegrate some of these young people back to schools, uh, we definitely need funds. So funds become one of the greatest, greatest challenge that we are, we are facing as an organization. Then uh, the other challenge I think is also maybe is uh, sometimes the frustration that comes with the young people of uh, the acting like a pendulum. Eh? Uh, today is like uh, a young person has been able to transform, then the next person then he relapses again to the former state. Simply because we are not able to have that full uh, like uh, implementation uh, kind of a program to this kind of a person. 
So because like maybe I've rescued a young person, then it's like I've taken the young person from the drugs. But the family is still undergoing a lot of programs. So sometimes helping a young person without helping the family becomes a, a challenge. So the whole, uh, a wholesome kind of a challenge to come, maybe helping the child as well as helping also the family. So it becomes so easy because the child will find comfort in, in, in Maono, but back at home he still undergoes the same challenge. So that is the kind of a challenge that you've been having. Despite all the challenges experienced, Ken, the Maono founder, proudly tells us of his achievements. I'm a firm believer in God. I'm a Christian. Uh, so I usually make sure that every day I get my, my dose uh, from, uh, from the Word of God. Uh, that is one. Two, I'm also motivated in seeing a life change. Uh, as I said from the word go, it's like, uh, I'm not here to change the world. I'm only here to change one person. And that, that one person changed, that one person transformed, will be able to change the world. So that has always been my motivation. Every day when I wake up in the morning, I say, I'm going back to, I'm going to Dandora, but I'm going to bring, to transform a soul. I'm going to transform a person. So that is my key inspiration. You will see lives changed. You will see souls change. You will see Dandora, the positive side of Dandora is going to come out. Yeah, so in 10 years time, we want to see Maono grown. We, I'm coming up with talent academies for balls, uh, soccer that is for, for dance, uh, for modeling, for acrobatics, uh, for karate and all that. So just to make sure that young people are able to, to earn from what they love most. What pains me is like seeing a young person nowadays getting into the border border or the duty or the motorcycles as forms of employment. To me those are not meaningful images of young people. Yeah, I want to see a young person who is passionate in dance is able to earn from, from dance. I want to see a young person who is passionate with, in modeling is able to earn from modeling. That is my, my, my desire. In his closing remarks, yeah, I would really appreciate the founders who came along and bring us on board. They really trust us, so like, and they, we are the front line when it comes to society forums. When you get to mobilize, do some outreach, we always feel like we are getting to impact the community in a positive way. So like, most people now get to, they know about Maono in our community, so like, I really thank them because like, I have seen people, or rather my friends who, uh, came in in the space where they were using drugs and right now at least they are so sober. We are a scientific organization. We are a scientific organization. We are a scientific organization. We are a organization. We are a Ken, who is the manager, Kenneth O'Willi, uh, he has been like, okay, it's not he has been, but he's like a dad to me, because he does everything to me, like, I just see myself, like, among his, his daughters, so, I appreciate it for supporting my talent. Uh, Pia ukiwa na shida home, ana, ana come through, vipo atena sana. So, amesaidia wengi, so pia ye ni hero. But, tuseme tu ni vile ajajulikana, but ye ni hero uku dandora. Analipia wase wengi, watoi wengi fees. Anasaidia my parents, the mothers, the single mothers. Yeah, ana come through sana and I appreciate it and I'm happy. Mali yako. Shukran and I salute you. Uh, I'm not working uh, solo. Uh, I partner a lot uh, because I know I'm not, I'm not able to do all these things. I'm not a, a, an expert. I'm not a master in all these things. So my, my strength is so much in, in networking and partnership. So where I see that there is a, a partner who is good in, in mental wellness, I'll bring the partner on board. Where I see the partner is good in in, uh, in uh, sexual reproductive health and rights, I'll bring the partner in. Where I see the partner is good in soccer, I'll bring the partner in. Where I see the media is good in, in terms of blowing up what you are doing, I'll bring the media in. So our strength is so much in, in networking and partnership. So we actually desire to continue the collaborations with the partners that we are having currently, and we're also trying to open up that space for more partners.
to come on board. I would want to thank uh, one of our key partners is uh, Freedom Fund, whom we are currently working with in the implementation of the child domestic worker exploitation and abuse. I uh, also, also want to thank uh, Encare uh, uh, Foundation, the Petra, she has been uh, quite key with us together with Claire. We have been working very closely with them. They have been helping me in, uh, in many areas. Uh, that I'm not good in. Uh, I would also want to to thank us, many organizations that we work with here in Dandora. Uh, we have Shofko, uh, Kennedy Odede has always uh, come in to assist us as an organization to assist some of the programs and the activities that we are doing. So I'm happy with, with the current uh, partners that we have been having. They know what we are doing. Uh, they have seen what we are doing and uh, they are willing to continue working with us. As I'm ending this, we are coming up with a, a program maybe in next year that is called a, a Maono One Year Experience. So the Maono One Year Experience is a whole integrated uh, program that will make sure that after the one year we are having a round uh, kind of a person who has been transformed by the experience. It's a whole training for young people. So we'll be able to recruit a number and work with the number throughout to, to the end of the year. So after the end of the year, they'll be able to graduate. We'll give them our certificates. We'll, to, we'll have going to transform them to be our peer educators, to be the TOTs, and to be the people who will be doing a lot of the work uh, within our spaces. And just maybe, also maybe one, one thing I think I had not said, we also give the young people a lot of um, opportunities within our office space. We are doing what we call a job shadowing for the young people. So each and every day, all the young people that we have within our center, we have allocated a day for them. And that day is, uh, once, if it's your day, if it's a Monday, you will come to the office early in the morning and leave way back in the evening. And uh, we are, we'll teach you or train you or give you that opportunity to be able to know what an office setup is all about, what to expect in an office and uh, how to interact even within the office. Mm -hmm.